Okay, so now we're going to look at buffer solutions, and this is covered in section 11.6 in the textbook Blackman. So the composition of an, um, an action of buffered solutions, uh, they consist of a weak acid in its conjugate base. And uh, the Ka expression um, we can define as the concentration of the proton or hydronium ion uh, times the concentration of the uh, conjugate base over the concentration of the weak acid. So the concentration of protons, which is related to the pH, is then, by rearrangement of this equation, the Ka value times the concentration of the weak acid divided by its, uh, the concentration of its conjugate base. So a buffer resists change in pH values when a small amount of hydroxide or proton is added from a strong acid source. And so, you know, like the, the name implies, a buffer is uh, something that can resist change in pH values. So a buffer solution, if we look in the middle here, a buffer with equal concentration of a weak acid in its conjugate base will have a situation that looks like this. We've got the um, acid we started with and the um, conjugate base in equal concentrations. If we then add some of a strong base, like hydroxide, to this, we'll change the amount of each of these. Um, a small amount, but the pH overall won't change a whole lot. Um, if we add some uh, proton source, like a, a strong acid, we'll go in the opposite direction, but the um, pH won't change a whole lot. Um, so if we look at buffer capacity in pH, the buffer capacity is the amount of acid or base uh, that is neutralized by the buffer before there's a significant change in the pH. So buffer capacity depends on the composition of the buffer. Obviously, the more concentrated the buffer, the larger the amounts of the conjugate acid base pair, the greater the buffer capacity. And that just makes sort of uh, a logical sense to us. The pH of the buffer depends on the Ka of the species that we're using. So the buffer capacity and the pH, if the Ka is small, in other words, if the equilibrium concentration of the unassociated acid is close to the initial concentration, then uh, the proton concentration is equal to the Ka by uh, the um, acid we started with over the conjugate base. And therefore, the negative log of that proton concentration is equal to the negative log of both those terms. So negative log of the Ka minus the negative log of those two concentrations. And therefore, because negative log of proton concentration is also known as the pH, then uh, also the negative log of Ka is known as the pKa, which is something we measure that's sort of a constant for certain species. Then we have an equation where pH is equal to the pKa of the species we're interested in, plus the log of this ratio of concentrations of our conjugate base over our um, weak acid. So this is a known quantity, and this is related to how much of these species we have in solution. And presumably we know that because we've either buy, we've either bought that buffer or we've made it up ourselves and we know what that concentration is. And so we can work out the pH of the solution based on these uh, quantities. So uh, when we break the calculation into its two, two parts, there's a stoichiometric and an equilibrium part. Uh, the amount of the strong acid and base, or base, uh, that we add to this buffer solution results in a neutralization reaction. So uh, if we have uh, some of this conjugate base and we add a strong acid to it, we'll get that uh, being neutralized to give our, um, our weak acid plus water. If we take our uh, weak acid plus a strong base like hydroxide, we'll generate the conjugate base and water. And so by knowing how much uh, strong acid or strong base, HTO plus or OH minus we've added, the stoichiometry, we know how much of the uh, HX or X minus is formed in this process. So looking at this diagrammatically, we've got a buffer containing this um, weak acid and its conjugate base. If we add a strong acid, we're going along this route here. The neutralization will involve this equation, 
then we can recalculate the amount of the weak acid and its conjugate base that we have in solution. And we can use those values to calculate the concentration of um, protons, and that tells us what the pH should be. Okay, so if we add that strong acid or base to a buffer, we can work out these parameters and we come up with what's been called the henderson hasselbach equation, which is a very important equation when you're dealing with buffers, which happens a lot, not just in chemistry, but in biology, in uh, labs all over the world that deal with chemicals, because we often want to have a pH that's defined in a narrow range that won't change if we're adding acidic or basic species to it. And so this is used a lot in biology and uh, all sorts of other lab situations, environmental labs as well. So the henderson hasselbach equation is that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of uh, the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the weak acid or conjugate acid, depending on how you want to look at it. So we might want to do a, um, a titration of a weak acid with a strong base to find out what the concentration of that weak acid is. So if we titrate acetic acid with sodium hydroxide, before any base is added, the solution only contains a weak acid. So the pH is actually going to be uh, not that low. So a strong acid will have a very low pH. So a very strong acid might have a pH of 1, like hydrochloric acid, at the right concentration. The pH of a acetic acid solution might only be a pH of um, 5 or 4 or 6 or something like that. So not particularly far removed from the 7 that we'd have of neutral water. When a strong base is added though, the strong base consumes some of that weak acid and it acts like a buffer. So we don't get a large change in pH while there's still some acetic acid in solution. So if we look at um, the uh, green line here, the green line is when we start out over here with, so this is a fairly strong solution of um, acetic acid, starting off with a pH of around uh, 2.5 or so, we add in um, sodium hydroxide and the pH doesn't change a whole lot. It goes uh, through this part of the um, equation here where we're going up through 3, 4, 5, 6 until we get to the equivalence point. So around this area here is where we see a dramatic change in the color of an indicator. So we put an indicator into a titration to show us when the pH undergoes a drastic change. So phenolphthalein will undergo a change in color around pHs 8 to 10. And we know that um, in a, a titrating acetic acid being a weak acid, uh, we won't get this uh, dramatic change in pH until we get the equivalence point, in which case we'll go from a pH of around 7 to a pH of around 11 very very quickly as we go from a solution that's buffered by the acetic acid to one that's been exhausted in acetic acid, no longer any more there to buffer the sodium hydroxide. And so every extra drop of sodium hydroxide is drastically changing the pH of the solution.